The calendar is always turning and the clock never stops ticking. From a kingdom perspective, there can be no doubt that we are entering into the end of the age. Though things on earth will get progressively worse, the church will glow brighter as the kingdom of God nears its fullness. As we draw closer to the end of the age, now more than ever, we all need courage. Courage to endure, courage to overcome, and courage to fulfill all the Lord is calling us to do. There is arising a group of people who understand their kingdom authority and move in it. You can be a part of that remnant. Welcome to the End Time Courage Podcast with Lauren and Amy. All right. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to episode three of End Time Courage with Lauren and Amy. If you are just now tuning in, I highly recommend you going back and listening to our first couple of episodes because I feel like right now we are really building on on information and we don't want you to hop on and feel lost. So, uh, but thanks so much for tuning in. And, uh, you know, last time in our last episode, I talked about um, bread. We talk about some, uh, the, the importance of the, the years that are coming back, the next seven years. And Lauren, you said something that really caught uh, my attention, and I know it probably did our listeners, um, talking about preparing a Goshen. And I believe that this is so important and that we are all going to have a part to play in this. You know, even as I talked about the bread and talked about the Joseph anointing, uh, we we love the story of Joseph, but you know what? God didn't call a hundred of them. He called one and he was able to prepare in such a way that it fed a multitude of people, but we all have a part to play in preparation. And so I really want to hear from you today about what the Lord is showing you um, about these years that are coming, what you believe that 2023 to 2030 is going to look like. Um, what the Lord is showing you about what does a present day Goshen look like to you? I, I would love to hear this. Yeah. Wow. Such a loaded thing, but we're going to, I'm going to do my best. So we did have some interesting conversations last podcast mm-hmm. last week, and I did dip my toe into this uh, seven year plenty, seven year famine conversation, which I've tried to have often many times, but like we said last week, it just wasn't the right time. Mm-hmm. Mostly, I want people to understand that this is a now word. Mm -hmm. This is now. And the new seven-year block that we're in, and it's really going to take some due diligence of the listeners who aren't in what we're in, or maybe don't like the Caneo that, that we talked about last week, right? Or maybe have never studied the feast, or why are we talking about Jewish things? I'm not Jewish, okay? We have all different measures of faith on this podcast. And so I I don't want to insult anybody or I don't want to make anybody feel like they're not a Christian if they don't know Jewish feast days or anything like that. I'm just trying to say it would probably be great if we kind of studied these things out, paid more attention to the the culture of Jesus, right? Because that's what um, he did when he was walking on this earth. And that's how the Lord spun all this into motion. He chose the Jewish nation and he chose Israel. That's exactly right. Our Savior is Jewish. And so when you're talking about the Shemitahs and we're talking about Rosh Hashanah, we are talking about that because that is um, how the Jewish calendar is set up, which is very different than our calendar. Yes. And our Lord is Jewish. Yes. And so it serves us well. You know, some of our listeners may be thinking, well, I'm not Jewish. Right. Um, but our Savior is. And so, yes, what you're saying is we look at that calendar uh, to determine the times and the seasons of what we're talking about. Yes. And he rotates all of his uh, appointments on the Jewish feast days and the calendars. And it says in our Old Testament that this is how we are supposed to uh, judge and, and understand the seasons and times that we were in, not by our Western theology and calendars, but by his. Yes. And it started with the Jewish people. It's so good. So that is why that we're sticking with the Shemitahs, we're sticking with the seven-year blocks, because this is how we're going to wrap our head around how we're going to manage our time. And I, I want everyone to understand that managing your time during these 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 seasons is the key. So from 2022 to 2029, it's going to be our years of preparing and building Goshen, okay, for what is ahead for the next seven years, which will take us into 2036, okay? 
Now, there's a lot of debate, and I'm just going to be completely personally honest with you. Mm -hmm. And Amy, you know my stance on this because we've talked about this privately, and that's why we started this podcast. So you and I could be more private uh, publicly and and let the listeners know. And if you have a different opinion, that's okay. All right? Mm -hmm. We're not all cookie cutter. I do not believe we have until 2036. That That's my opinion. I think that 2036, the end of the Shemitah, the next seven years, I think either we're going to be out of here, um, depending on, I don't want to debate the theology of pre, you know, mid post trip. That's not what I'm talking about. I don't think any of us know how this is going to play out with the church. How long are we going to be here? I don't know. Could we see some things? Sure. You know, I don't believe that we're, uh, accustomed to wrath. I certainly don't believe that, but I don't know how much of this we're going to see with the beast system rising with the antichrist. You know, if we're going to go through, if the Lord is preparing us to prepare a Goshen, we're going to go through some kind of famine. That's exactly right. And and I love what you're saying, because I'm sure that some of our listeners feel very different in, in eschatological, you know, timelines. Right. And that's okay, because whether you believe, you know, that we will be raptured out of here before the tribulation or in the middle of tribulation, we your point is that we don't know how hard things could be right. even apart from the tribulation. That's right. You know, that like we're not in the tribulation right now, but yet there are people in the other parts of the world who are in famine. Yes. And so, yes, your point is that we need to be preparing for what the Lord is showing us regardless of, you know, how we feel about when he's going to come back that say he did for some reason come back, you know, before the the tribulation began we don't know that we will live the way that we're living with the wealth that we have don't. up until that day and that's your point yes and why would the lord raise up joseph's okay clearly say so have uh cows being born with clear identifications attached to the biblical joseph and we should know the story if we weren't going to be here to do something or be prepared for something. He's telling his people, and he always tells his prophets, right, before he does anything to tell the people. So from December, this December on to the next year, 2023, and going forward, but, you know, we will address those years as we continue this podcast, and we'll address the things that come up. Mm-hmm. We are, are going to be able to need to prepare a Goshen, okay? And that means prepare financially, prepare uh, physically, and it's not just going to happen overnight. This is going to be a gradual decline into a famine, and it's going to be a seven-year wealth transfer type of scenario. So the Lord is going to give his people the resources they need to be able to acquire whatever it is he's telling them to acquire. Mm -hmm. You know, what he tells me to acquire, Amy, may be different than what he tells you. And guys, what he tells me and Amy may be different than what he tells to you. Absolutely. You know, and so, and that is met with instruction. And this right here is a really great um, Genesis chapter 46, verse 28 jumped out and actually this morning amy which is really funny you know this this podcast talking about it being delayed and the frustration with that but knowing and having peace that it's the lord's timing when this would start um i got up this morning and i got an alert and i don't know if you've ever listened to tommy Ariami. Mm-hmm. he's a prophet he actually was a prophet out in um, england but the lord has now stationed him out to be a prophet for the nation of nigeria he's got big plans for nigeria And he had been isolated with the Lord, and the Lord had given him this scripture. And the scripture is verse 46, or chapter 46 in Genesis, verse 28. And it says, Now he sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph. This is Jacob. Mm -hmm. Sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to get directions to build Goshen. So that's what you were talking about Mm -hmm. last week, finding that place with the Lord to get instruction. Yes. And we need to position ourselves during these times to get and prepare for instructions. And, you know, when you talk about the bread and when I talk about financial situations, the Lord has given his people the tools to be able to teach other people how to acquire wealth, right? Or give them ideas on how to acquire assets, Mm-hmm. Whether it be new business ventures, whether it be new monetary systems, you know, how to navigate those, all right, what to invest in, what to buy. You know, I know that you've had in your spirit about land. I've, I've actually heard that myself. Yes. The Lord is going to be giving some of his people land, right? But all of these things do not fall in our laps. All of these things are not just going to be dropped on our heads. Not one person 
you know, is going to wake up a multimillionaire. It doesn't work that way. Right. It comes with instruction from the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And we have people that are raising up that are having these revelations and these ideas and these business ideas and these business ventures that can that are opening doors for people to step through so that they can begin to flourish in these other markets. At the same time, the Lord has also told me as my children begin to step into these markets and outside of the four walls of the church, you know, it's not going to be accepted by the church because the people are going to be like, well, why is this person not preaching, you know, like a Billy Graham, right? We know that mm-hmm. Billy Graham went out and did these huge tent crusades. I read all of his things. I watch all of his videos. I love him. But there is an entire untapped market that these people would never step foot in a church. Never. But yet they'll go to a uh, financial convention. Right. They'll go to a real estate convention. Yes. You know, they'll go to a multi-level marketing convention. They'll go to a health and wellness convention. And if the Lord could get his people, his on fire remnant bride in these businesses, in these markets, when they take those stages, they glorify him and everything that comes out of their mouth in that business. And so people who wouldn't normally walk into a church are now been planted with the seed of revelation of Christ. Yes. Right? And a whole harvest field begins to start coming in. That's so good. Who is this person? What's their name? Where, where do they come from? What church do they go to? I want more to hear what they say. Well, guess what? You know, whatever market that you're in, you may preach the gospel on, I don't know, a podcast. Right. And they may follow your podcast and get saved with the things that you're saying from your podcast, but yet you met them at a convention during a, I don't know, event in whatever market. Absolutely. Right. Which is why the Lord plants people in the marketplace. That's right. As witnesses um, to the people who, you're right, who would never darken the door of a church. No. And and he told us to go out. And part of that go going out and being witnesses is in our jobs. Mm-hmm. When we move forward into the next election cycle, Amy, mm-hmm. we're going to have an opportunity. And I, I know that some Christians are get tired of other Christians looking at Donald J. Trump as their savior. Mm -hmm. I think that's an argument that some have with prophets or people constantly saying, can't wait for Trump to return. He's coming back. He's coming back. They get on this kick of, well, he's not your savior. Why do we want Trump back? You know, all of these things. Mm Mm-hmm. As, a, as a, a body of Christ, we need to get into a place of wisdom and know that the Lord uses different people as tools to accomplish things that he needs his church to accomplish. And if the church is oppressed, if we're suppressed, if we're broke, if the, if the, if the inflation is so high we can't perform or produce fruit, right, how are we going to prepare a Goshen? So we need to get behind the the government that the Lord is starting to rise back up. I have said for a long time, you know, when this whole debacle came down with the election last time. Yes. And said person was crowned instead of, you know, voted on. That was my opinion. And I stick to it. Mm-hmm. That this other person would come back. Now, at the time, we've talked about this too, Amy, about having immaturity in the things that I've seen and heard, thinking things would be right now. And so I would get on my lives and I would say, he's coming back soon, right? It's going to be overturned. They're going to find the fraud. That's not what the Lord said. Mm -hmm. He never said it. He never gave a time. Right. It was just my perception of that. But I knew that the end result would be, he'll be back. He's not done. There's something else he has to accomplish. You know, his purpose... Uh, to come back is for the purpose of the church to prepare Goshen. That's my whole point. Mm -hmm. And if we can look at it that way as a tool for the government to get off of our back, right, for the finances to come in, for the taxes to be lower, for us to be able to operate and build and maneuver like we need to. We need people in those positions that are um, easy, right, to live under. Right. Right. And we're going to get that. We're going to get that. So 
the coming into the next seven year block, you know, I, we don't want to, I, I never, I always tell people on my Patreon when I'm telling them how to invest in the cryptocurrencies, there's a certain a few assets that we specifically focus on. Some are time sensitive, you know, I have different pricing points and everything like that. I tell them don't ever FOMO into anything. You, this isn't going to be an overnight situation. The whole world isn't going to flood into cryptos overnight and someone's going to be a multimillionaire and they're going to miss it. Like you were saying, you're not going to miss it. That's right. why we're doing the podcast. We've yes. got some time. But at the end of this time, there is going to be an expiration date. There is going to be no more time. And then we've got a famine that's coming and you're not prepared. Right. Or you you spent all your spoil that you were getting that the Lord was pouring out the wealth transfer on having this abundant life. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't have an abundant life. We should have an abundant life. It's okay to have things. But as long as we stay kingdom minded, right, and we use the resources as the Lord has intended all of us to to, to use it with, you know, the next seven block year of a famine, um, we're going to be the lenders, not the borrowers. Yes, I believe that as well. I do. And, and you know, it, we talked about in the last episode that sometimes it's very small changes. And I'm very hesitant about giving examples because yes. I don't want people to feel like, oh, well, since she did this, this is exactly what I need to go do. Right. You know, that's that's what is beautiful about having your own relationship with the Lord. You know, that when I want to know what my husband thinks, I don't go and ask someone else to tell me what he said. I, I go to Jeff personally and say, what do you think about this? And that is the end goal for our relationship with the Lord. But a couple of years ago, when he was speaking to me about the bread, we were we were buying up some grain Anyway, because at the time there actually was a shortage. There's still a shortage on uh, the whole white wheat. Um, You can find hard red much easier than you can find hard white. But we were buying up some, you know, here and there. And the Lord just, you know, know, again, specifically for me, showed me as I was looking at my little bank account, the amount of money that I was spending at Starbucks. (laughs) Now, I'm not against Starbucks. I have drank Starbucks since then. But the amount of money that I was spending there per month would buy a six-gallon bucket of wheat per month. Wow. And, of course, I'm going usually, you know, with my children, there's like three of us. You know, I'm purchasing three. Every time you go through. Every time I I go through, and I'm going through at 2.15 every day. (laughs) And so when I added that up, the Lord just, you know, gently spoke to me. And it's like what you're saying. Is there anything wrong with going to Starbucks? No, no, there's not. But is the better decision to save that money and buy wheat yes. that is nutritional for my family and a six gallon bucket as things are now? I mean, that lasts me probably nine or 10 months. Right. And so it was just weighing it. Did, did I even have the money, per se, to buy a bucket and to keep going to Starbucks? I did. But it was just what he showed me. Mm-hmm. Is this the best use of the money that I've given you? So instead, I go to Starbucks a couple of times a week, sometimes once a week. Sometimes I get a smaller drink. You know, I don't have to get the Trenta Right. of something. Right. I can actually learn how to make my own coffee at home, you know, which, so boring. which is so boring <laughs> and it's not fun. And, you know, and I keep telling people that they're like, you can really doctor it up. And I'm like, it's the experience. Yes. yes. It's not the drink. And it felt like a treat to me right. to go and get coffee. And, and again, nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And I'm still doing it, but I'm doing it less. And so that's what you're talking about, that in, in this preparation we're, we're not saying do these stringent things and then the Lord will make you a millionaire by next week. We're just saying getting into the habit of listening to him about even those small financial decisions yeah. can help prepare us for what's coming. Is, is that accurate? Uh, yeah, that's exactly, it's exactly it. And this is why I push so hard on financial education. I push so hard on health and wellness. I push it because, Amy, I've seen it. I've seen what's coming. And, and you've done it. Yes. Yes, you you had to do it. I had to do it. Yes. And I, my heart goes out to, you know, and you know this is, this is the truth, and we're just kind of going to hit this head on here. 
for whatever reason, there is a trigger word, money, with the church. Mm -hmm. You say that word, and you've got the gates of hell flying at you, right? Why do you need money to preach the gospel? Why do you need money? Why do you always talk about money, right? Why is the pastor always asking for money at the time at church? I just tithe. Why are we taking up another offering for missions, right? You start bringing in a monetary value, and people lose it. But unless you've seen it like I have, like you have, unless you know what's coming, right, then you don't understand the pressure that, um, that's on some of us to prepare the body of Christ to do something, to do some, learn a new skill, learn this new business, right? You're nine to five when, a bread, when bread costs an entire day, day's wage, it's not going to work for you. It's not. You're nine to five. I mean, it, you, won't ever, you won't be able to work enough hours. You'll be standing in the bread line. Yes. And I'm not saying that the Lord will not provide for you. He absolutely will. He will. But the Lord says, occupy till we come. And I put this on my Facebook. I don't know when. Maybe last night. Being poor is hard. Becoming wealthy is hard. They're both hard. Mm-hmm. So choose your hard. Right. Right? This earth that we live on is hard. It's hard, and, and the Lord, it was so hard that the creator of all had to come and physically die for us to make it. Right. We were never going to make it. We were yes. never going to make the cut. Yes. It is that hard. Mm-hmm. So why not choose to do your hard with wisdom, mm-hmm. right? So it is going to be hard to learn a new thing. Yes. It is going to be hard to prepare that Goshen. It is hard for me sometimes to sit quietly with the Lord when I've got a hundred million things running through my mind and I'm trying to get instruction from him. Absolutely. Those things are hard. And and our Lord is is a Lord of multiplication. You know, yes, he did absolutely send manna, you know, for for his children. But the majority of the time, if you look through scripture, he he multiplied. You know, he multiplied the little children's lunch yeah. and fed the thousand. He did. And he used Joseph to store up. Yeah. And so do personally, I would feel better about doing my little part and then asking him to multiply that there you go. than to, to presume that I have to do nothing and then he will just provide. I just don't ever see that anywhere in the Bible. No, I, I don't think it is because he, he likes to partner with us. Amen. And, and so, and what a blessing it is to partner with him even. And so, Again, whether it's crypto or whether it's assets or whether it's bread, the message is not that you have to go out and do something so big mm-hmm. that you are taking care of yourself for, for the next seven years. Because that, in, in fact, is is the opposite, opposite. Of, of what we're saying. I've heard that so many because times, Because that's Amy. still you taking care of you. And that's not what we're saying. Nope. God takes care of us, but he also gives us signs and dreams and he speaks to us through his word about famine that's coming and he expects us to to have obedience in those things but he is the supplier of course but he partners with us and so when you're talking about preparing for this goshen one um what is your definition of goshen when you say that what do you mean for our listeners to understand exactly what you're talking about? What is a, a modern day Goshen? What does that look like? It's a you? safe haven. Mm-hmm. It's a safe haven. It is a place we're going to have pockets all over the, the U.S. and even around the world of these apostolic hubs of safe havens. All right. It's biblical that he did it for the Levites. Well, he, well, what was it? He did the places of rest. It wasn't for the Levites, but it was for the ones who accidentally committed crimes. Yes. Right. Yes. And they had a safe place to go to. All right. Not that this is we've, you know, the same thing, but the Lord has done apostolic hub safe places before. And we've talked about this. What has been done will be done again. There will be places here and there will be sheep and goat states. Mm -hmm. There will be. There will be sheep and goat nations. There will be sheep and goat counties. So preparing a Goshen is to have that place, these hubs where the church is going to operate in these famine times, in the time of the rise of the Antichrist, the rise of the beast. This is a another podcast for another day. But we're going to have these apostolic hubs where we are, Amy, you've seen it, again, a a podcast for another day, where we are literally operating as the Acts Church. 
we are farming. <laughs> we are producing our own produce. We have our own, you know, sect of how to, you know, medical, how to help people who, who are sick, right? Who, you know, we are supernaturally preserved and protected while the whole world is going up in flames, right? right. We're going to have a place where the Lord is protecting his bride until yes. he comes and receives us. And these Goshens have to be built. Land has to be purchased. Yes. Equipment has to be purchased. You know, people have to be fed. People have to be clothed. I mean, there's just so many variables to this. And I, I want to say to some some people that are probably listening to this, and know as we wrap up, we're getting close to, to the end of this episode. We could keep going. Um, and we will next week. <laughs> yeah. But um, to people who think that, Lauren, I don't even know how I got through this year. You know, I, I, I am financially literally poor. I can't invest anything. There's no way for me to... Uh, to buy anything, any bread, any investments, you know, I can't even go into a a business venture because I have no money left over after I take care of the bills, needs, and my family. I get it. But while Joseph was in prison, he could not beg or manipulate his way out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, he told the baker, the the cupbearer, remember me when you go up. Yes. You know, remember me, please tell somebody about me. I was wrongly accused. I've been down here for eight years or however long. We think he was down there eight to 10 years. You cannot beg your way out of a prison season. You can't. The Lord has to lift you out of it and he will. Yes. And coming into this next seven year block, you do not have to worry. You know what you do? You praise him. What did Paul do in prison? He praised the Lord. You know, what was Joseph doing down in prison? He was working with the spirit of excellence in the pits of hell. Yes. You know, he praised Yeshua. He praised God. And the Lord plucked him out. And the Lord put him in front of Pharaoh, right? And he was able to govern. But notice this. When the Lord did pull Joseph out, he no longer could speak as a prisoner. He no longer could have prison language. He no longer had prison clothes. He had, uh, he had, there was a certain way he had to carry himself that was different from how he carried himself in the prison, right? So there's, with the coming out of prison, there is a level up, there's an advancement. And so there's a responsibility there. Yes. So what you're learning here in prison, in these prison seasons, for the ones that feel like, you know, you're, you just don't even know how you made it through the year. You don't know how you're going to make it through the next year. Well, guess what? We're coming into a transition where the old wineskins, like Amy's saying, are dying and the new wineskins are coming and they're going to look different for every one of you. Mm -hmm. And they're also going to not be accepted by the people who saw you one way and now see you another way. A jealousy could come in, you know, um, backbiting spirits and gossip can come in, but you stay the course. And the Lord is going to open these doors for you to be able to create wealth. That's so good. And and I want to encourage those who feel that way as well, that, um, you know, I can't buy up bread. Amy, I I can't even afford a meal right now, or I can't afford to invest. You know what? Those are real things. And so my encouragement is, yes, the Lord sees that as well. And, but part of the reason that we're doing this podcast and what he is, um, what the Lord is even doing, he is raising up the people that can for the people that can't. Yes. And, and it's interesting to me. I don't know if you've seen this, Lauren, but there's even been some young people that are, on my Instagram, uh, Facebook, and they are posting a lot about the Acts Church. Mm. And, um, but they're mostly posting about that they met every day. And there's something in them that longs for that, for that early church, you know, of the meeting and mm-hmm. gathering every day. And, and of course, they may even know this, but what I want to interject is, yes, they were doing it, but they were doing it out of necessity. Yes. You know, it wasn't just that they're having a big old party every day and we only see each other on Sundays. We'd rather be in the time where we're partying every day. No, they were coming and they were meeting each other's needs. And maybe one was very wealthy and one did have food and another one taught and the other one took care of the children. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone had to be wealthy and not everyone was wealthy. But there was the wealthy among them. And because of that, they were able to take care of everyone. And I believe what you're saying in this modern day Goshen, that's what it's going to look like. There's not even a necessity for every single person to be a millionaire or to be wealthy, or there's not a necessity for everyone to know how to bake bread, but we need someone who knows how to make bread and we need someone who knows how to farm. And we need someone who knows how to business, 
business, yep. all the things. And so at the end of the age, the Lord is going to be bringing those people together to be in community to one another because we will need to depend on one another as we depend on him to make it through what is coming. Um, I sent this verse to you, and I, I wanted to close with this as well. Psalm 37, 18 and 19 says, The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will remain forever. Mm. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance. That is a promise to those of us who are in Christ that in the days of famine, again, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that things are going to look like they did 10 years ago. Like for me, I'm not going to Starbucks every single day, but I know the Lord will provide and even use his church, I believe, to bless uh, the the lost, even as a ways um, to a mean of uh, witnessing and to have that open door of what you were even talking about um, earlier. So this is such helpful information. And again, as uh, Lauren has said in uh, our past episodes, there there are links uh, that you can look at that she will be putting in the comment sections of, of where we post our podcast so that you can get further information um, about... F- you know, finances and cryptocurrencies and how to uh, learn. I mean, you have an amazing platform where you have put out videos of, uh, you know, almost crypto for dummies. You know, uh, this is where you start. I have videos and we'll be putting those links about about the bread um, on my Patreon on Monday nights. We really dive more into, we don't talk about end times, but we talk more about our relationship with the Lord. What does that look like? Where, where do I need to be with my relationship, um, with the Lord, with what is coming? That's more of what I'm doing on Patreon right now. I will say to that, Amy, what you're doing on Monday nights on your Patreon, guys, you, none of us will make it through what's coming. If we do not have that relationship with the Lord where you hear him clearly and you distinguish between his voice, your voice, and the devil's voice. And, you know, Amy, that's such a a service that you're giving to everybody. And I I would really encourage everybody to to jump on that Patreon and and go through that. Because, guys, I'm telling you, we are going to go through some things and we're not, no one is going to make it unless you have that walk with the Lord and you are in that secret place. And, you know, you're doing exactly what he says to do when he says turn right, you turn right. When you when he says left, you go left because there's other things coming. Me and Amy have, have talked about it. We can't talk about it now. Other podcasts. There's other things coming. You know, we thought COVID was bad. There's other things coming. So we want to encourage you and love you guys. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that uh, my mom used to tell me this. Uh, you're as close to the Lord today as you want to be. Mm. And um, that's absolutely true because he draws near and he wants to have a close relationship with us. And again, it's not even just about surviving what's coming. It is about thriving with joy. And some of uh, you listeners, you've already done that. People look at your life and, and say, wow, for you to have joy with what you've been through. So so this isn't even about like, oh, buy your survivor pack, guys, <laughs> and, you know, and just hold on for dear life. No, this is about having joy yes. in the midst of some some difficult times. And, and it's a completely feasible to do. Yep. And, you know, the Lord has given us joy yep. in times that should have been depressing. Should have killed us. Should have killed us. <laughs> And it just didn't because his strength and his grace and all of these things were there. And so what we're giving to you is not a, a hold on for your dear life and just hold on till Jesus comes. This is no, we're giving you tools to do better than you ever have in your spirit. Yes. That even if uh, the flesh is weak, that the spirit is thriving. And what a witness, mm-hmm. what a witness to the world when things come in and even, you know, things like COVID and, but you find that joyful Christian who is just praising the Lord through the pandemic, through the lockdowns, you know, those are the people we wanted to be around. That's right. 
and and we can all be those people for the for the others in our lives. So, I think this was an amazing podcast, and uh, there is more to come. We have so much to share, even as we're taking breaks and talking amongst ourselves between these podcasts. Uh, we are laughing because uh, we could just sit here and talk all day because there's so much information and there's so much that the Lord has given us. But we certainly don't want to overwhelm you guys, and so we're uh, taking this a little bit at a time. But we just. We love our listeners. We pray for you guys. We um, ask the Lord to bless the ones that are tuning in. We may not be able to see your faces, recognize you in a street corner, but God knows who you are. And we're asking him to to bless you, to give you um, the spirit, uh, again, of the sons of Issachar, that you will be able to discern the times and the seasons. We're asking him to give you, and we just bless you. We bless you with joy and grace, and we... um, prophesy to you that you will have what you need in the days to come. Mm -hmm. And as we ask the Lord, what are the little things that we can do to prepare? He's going to show us that. So we love our listeners and we're so appreciative uh, for you. And I thank you for everything that, you know, you shared, uh, Lauren, because you, you know, there's certain things about this that you know, and have studied even more than I have. And so I'm being educated as well as our listeners. So, so what's your last thought? My last thought is uh, Jesus loves you. He really does. And this is a time of uh, the great and terrible day of the Lord, depending on what side you're on. And we're going to have a great time. So don't you worry. And we will see you next week. That's right. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining in today. We really appreciate and love every one of you. We always want to leave you with tools and resources that will help you prepare for the days ahead. We have links in every comment section, whether you're on the podcast, just listening audibly, or whether you're on YouTube, check the comment section. We have links for Amy's counseling, my uh, prophetic financial information, all is there to be able to help you. We're here to serve you. We love you, and we'll see you next time.